Hello, friends, and thank you as always for visiting the Legend Sports Universe YouTube channel, Legend Sports Universe, where legends play forever. The Franchise Stars Baseball League Year 3 comes to you live from Wrigley Field in Chicago, Illinois, the home of the Cubs. And we should have a terrific pitcher's duel for you today. The NL East leading New York Mets come into Chicago to face the Cubbies. Cubbies sending Fergie Jenkins to the hill. The Mets go with Tom Seaver. Jenkins is about ready to go already here. Nine starts on the season, five and three, a 2.59 earned run average. He has been strong. The Cubs once again got off to a bit of a slow start. They are starting to pick it up a bit. They are struggling to score runs, though. Their pitching has been solid. The Mets have been red hot this month, 10 and 5. Coming off a Ray is struggling out of the gate, batting only 203. As we get to about seven weeks into the season. Reyes bounces this one up the middle. Diving stop. Beckert knocks it down, but he's not going to have a play. Even if he had fielded that one cleanly, it wouldn't have had Reyes. And Reyes is on with an infield base hit. That will bring up Edgardo Alfonso. Alfonso batting 280. First pitch slider from Jenkins. Misses down and away. Two homers, seven runs batted in for Alfonso. Jenkins peeks over, checks at Reyes. Fastball. In for a called strike, and the count goes to one and one. Looks in. Breaking ball away. Can't be handled behind the plate by Hartnett. And that seems like a pass ball. That seems like Hartnett just playing drop that one. And Reyes takes second. Reads it well. And the Mets are quickly threatening here in the first. If Jenkins is wearing the wrong number. I believe Jenkins is 34, if I remember. 31, something like that. I don't think he was 33, though. So I got to look at that after the game. I don't know why here in year three we're having a few guys getting bounced off of their proper uniform numbers, so we'll keep an eye on that. Two and two the count as Jenkins works to Alfonso. Line shot down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Reyes comes around third. He'll score easily. Played well off the outstretched stands there down the right field line. Alfonso will be held to a single. But two batters in, the Mets have a run in, and it's 1-0 New York. Alfonso just takes what he's given. He knew that Jenkins was working him away. He decided to drop one in down the right field line. So now here's Carlos Beltran, the Mets center fielder, batting 327. First pitch fastball from Jenkins in for a call and strike. Beltran, six homers, 22 runs batted in. Jenkins will try to limit the damage to the one run. 0 1 pitch, Beltran turns it out into right, but it's caught. Cubs have had a little bit of a shakeup out there in their outfield, just trying to find some people to produce. We'll get to that in a moment. Here's your Mets lineup Reyes, Alfonso, and Beltran, as you've seen. The rookie, Pete Alonzo, Daryl Strawberry, and Howard Johnson. Francisco Lindor, Shane Mack, and Todd Hundley. The Mets' offense has not been great. They are 12th in the National League in OPS. But they're pitching their team ERA down at 2.71. And that has led the way for them thus far. Alonzo fouls off the first pitch offering. And Alonzo, the rookie, 291, 7 homers, 25 RBIs. Ball from Jenkins misses inside. One and one, the count to Alonzo. Spider there, Alonzo pulls off, and the count goes to one and two. Fourth ball there, Alonzo gets a piece to stay alive. Mm -hmm. 
and takes a glance over at Alonzo. At Alfonso at first, though. Alfonso capable of sneaking a steal, but he's not really a base running threat. Alonzo fighting Jenkins here, good at that. Another 1-2 offering, Sinker rides inside, it's 2-2. Two and two. Jenkins from the set again, delivers, fastball ties up Alonzo, and down he goes for the second out. First strikeout to Fergie Jenkins. Pete Alonzo will grab a seat. Daryl Strawberry. Inside fastball, Alonzo tried to turn it and miss. So now here's Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry batting 295. First pitch fastball in for a call strike. Nine home runs, 24 runs batted in for Daryl. Long and lean, Mets right fielder. Oh, one curveball. Strawberry swings, gets a piece of it. And the count goes to 0 2. Oh, this one fat. Strawberry definitely trying to yank it. That kick is off the outside corner. It still pulled it. Well fat. 0 oh, 2 offering. Gets him with the sinker. Strike three as Strawberry swings and misses. And the side is retired. But Edgardo Alfonso drives in the first run of the game. After the Jose Reyes single, the pass ball moved him to second. And this single down the right field line from Alfonso brought him home. We head to the bottom of the first at Wrigley. Mets won. Cubs coming up. And they will face Tom Seaver. And Seaver has simply been exceptional this year. Five and one. A 1.57 earned run average that whipped down below one. He has been terrific through his first nine starts. He will look in to face Bill Dallin. Up shortstop leading off 299, eight homers, 22 RBI. Bill Lang, among the league leaders in stolen bases, but is sitting today for the Cubs. Lang batting a Paltry, 192. First pitch from Seaver is in for a strike. Seaver rocks and fires. Fastball there is fouled off, and the count goes to 0-2. Seaver gets the sign from Hundley. And delivers. Fastball. Tries to hold up. Unable to. And there's a three-pitch strikeout for Tom Seaver to open things up here. In the second game of this three-game set. Here's Stan Hack. Hack batting 365 at the moment. Two homers, eight RBIs. Hack was among the batting leaders in year one of the FSBO. Then... Had a significant backslide a year ago, but seems to have found his stroke again here in year two, or year three, rather. Seaver falls behind in 2-0 and oh here. High fastball misses, it's 3-0. Rookie third baseman Ron Santo waits in the on-deck circle for the Cubs. Rio pitch, taking all the way. It's a fastball in for a called strike. Seaver looks in and delivers. High fastball, fly ball to the left. Shane Matt underneath it, puts it away for out number two. So that'll bring up Santo. Again, the Cubs batting order. Dallin, Hack, and Santo. Hartnett, Cavaretta, and Solly Hoffman. Jimmy Slagle, Ian Happ, and Glenn Becker. 
Cubs OPS is actually up to sixth in the National League, which I admit is a bit surprising to me as they're kind of trying to piece it together. They've not gotten a heck of a lot out of their outfield. Walt Morin is now hurt. Jimmy Slagle's good batting average. Looks like he's up around 380, but that's in limited at bats. They're just trying to piece it together, but one guy who has had it going from the start here is the rookie at the plate, Ron Santa. 305, eight homers, one hopper down to first. Alonzo takes it on the in-between hop, takes it to the bag himself, and the side is retired. So the Cubs go down in order in the first. Full head to the top of the second from Wrigley. Mets one, Cubs nothing. Stepping in from the Mets, here's Howard Johnson. Johnson batting 260. Six homers, 16 runs batted in. First pitch fastball is in for a called strike. Johnson, who was surprisingly high in batting average last year to go along with his power, he hit over 300. This 260 area is much more along the line of what you would expect from Brazil. Fastball from Jenkins is in there, and he's ahead of Johnson 0-2. Jenkins looks in and delivers. And a slider up and in gets Johnson. Another uniform number gets changed. Good grief. Howard Johnson, for some reason, wearing 22, even though he's been 20 for two and a half years. That's his proper number. All right, I'm going to have to start scanning those before I do these broadcasts. There's too many of these uniform numbers are getting adjusted with roster moves, and they shouldn't be. So I apologize for that. I assure you, everybody is assigned the number they wore in real life. Or struggling again, 217, two homers, 14 RBIs. Well, ball misses down and away. It's one and one. On the inside corner, it's 22. Actually, realizing Howard Johnson's number being changed, probably because Pete Alonzo is a rookie now, and Alonzo wears 20 also, so Hojo got moved. Jenkins gets Lindor, who just continues to be abysmal at the plate for the Mets. Beautiful fourth ball there. Lindor swings right over the top of it. So that'll bring up Shane Mack. Mack batting 246. Fastball off the plate for ball one. Seven home runs, though, for Mack. 18 runs batted in. Again, Mack acquired before year two of the FSBL, along with reliever George Mogridge in a trade for Lenny Dykstra. Ground ball down to third. Santo has it. Throws the first. And Mack is retired, as are the Mets. So the Mets go down in order in the second. We'll head to the bottom half. Mets one, Cubs nothing. Hartnett, Cavaretta, and Hoffman do up for Chicago. Here's Gabby Hartnett, 275, 11 homers, 35 RBIs on the year. Reverse splits for Hartnett. He's been 204 against lefties, but 310 against righties. So Breaking ball from Seaver misses outside. And Seaver leads the National League in earned run average at the moment with a 1.57. Fastball here is off the plate, and it's 2-0. and up. Fastball there on the outside corner. Ends up being pulled, floated out to left. Not too well hit. Mack gets underneath it, puts it away for out number Back one. Fifth, the first baseman, number 44. So here's Phil Cavaretta. Cavaretta having a nice season so far. 285, seven homers, 23 runs batted in. He's been getting the bulk of time at first base for Chicago. First pitch swing here, sends this one out to center. Beltran going back on it, cracks it down just shy of the track. Nice run and grab there by Beltran. Cavaretta hits it well, but not quite well enough, and there are two away. 
That will bring up Solly Hoffman. Hoffman batting 254, two homers, eight runs batted in. Hoffman called up when Walt Morin went down with an ankle injury. First pitch fastball swung on and missed. Hoffman homered yesterday in the first game of this series. The Cubs winning that one 5 to 2. The old hands and Sid Fernandez locked up in a good pitcher's game, both allowing two runs over seven. For the Cubs, struck against Mets reliever Rick Reed in the eighth. 0 2 pitch there, grounder to second. Alfonso is there. Throws to first, and the sign is retired. So Seavers retired the first six to face him. We'll head to the top of the third at Wrigley. Mets won. Cubs nothing. Hundley, Reyes, and Alfonso do up. Here's Todd Hundley, the switch hitting catcher, 276. Only one homer this catcher. year. So far for Hundley, six RBIs. He will step in to face Fergie Jenkins. Hit from Jenkins, fastball in for a call strike. Jenkins works up in the zone again. That one misses a little high. Now goes to one and one. That one's popped up on the infield. Glenn Becker underneath it. Puts it away for out number one. Now batting. So one down here in the top of the third. Order will roll over. Here's Jose Reyes. Reyes singled his first time up, moved to second on a pass ball on Gabby Hartnett, and then scored the game's only run on a bloop single from Edgardo Alfonso. Slider misses down and away. It's 1 0. Reyes leans the National League and doubles with 18, despite the low batting average so far this year. Pass ball is in. The count goes for 1 and 1. Sinker misses away. It's two and one. That's ball. A little bit low. Three and one to count. There you see Alfonso waiting on deck. Three and one pitch. Nice sinker from Jenkins. Reyes swings and misses, and the count is full. 3-2 offering Reyes. Loops one to left. Ian Half will get there. He's under it. Puts it away for out number two. So that'll bring up Alfonso. Alfonso drove in the game's only run to this point with a loop single his first time up. Just inside the right field foul line. Hits this one well to center. Not sure it has the distance. Tracked down. Not sure the ball is carrying all that well. That sounded good off the bat. But it's tracked down by Jimmy Slate. Siegel, actually. Not Slate. Oh, he's there. 382. No homers. Three RBIs. This is a recent call-up. Again, he's getting time. Bill Lang has been the everyday center fielder for the Cubs for two years and change here in the FSBL. But Lang... Off to a miserable start. He's stealing bases when he's getting on, but he's only batting 192. He's getting the day off here. And Slagle, I'll keep on calling him Slagle. I don't know why I apologize. Slagle gets the start here as the lefty hitter against the right-handed throwing receiver. 2-0 the count. That one's fouled off. Holmes pitching has been pretty solid. Their offense, their OPS is actually middle of the pack in the league. They're not scoring a ton of runs. They're trying to get some production from their outfield because they already have a couple of other weak spots. Glenn Becker and anyone else they have tried to play at second base has been weak. Darwin Barney has gotten a turn there. He's been poor as well. One of the least shocking things 
would be to see the Cubs focus on a second baseman and an outfielder during the upcoming rookie draft. Diego lines this one the other way. Just fouled down the left field line. We're about two weeks away from the year three rookie draft. Round ball to second. Alfonso has it. Throws first, and there's one away. Always fun to see who will enter the league next season. Top rookies this year, including Jackie Robinson of the Dodgers. Presumptive favorite for the National League's Most Valuable Player Award as Ian Happ steps in. For the Cubs with one out here in the third. Fastball, ooh, that's a generous strike ball. That looked down and in. But Seaver gets the nod anyway. That ball misses down low. One and one to count. Center just off the plate. It's two and one. That looked like more of a strike than the first pitch. Breaking ball there. Half hits it the other way. Carrying fairly well, actually. But Mack puts it away with ease. And there are two men now. Batting nine, the second baseman. So that'll bring up the nine hitter, Glenn Becker. Becker, 208, a 489 OPS. No homers, eight runs batted in. Remarkably, so far, Becker has been the best of a bad lot. Slider is in there for a first pitch strike from Seaver, who looks to have all his pitches working at the moment. That's ball misses down low. It's one and one. Ball there is in for a called strike, and it's one and two. Seaver working all the quadrants. Up and in. Down, away. Comes inside there, misses the curveball. That one got away from him. It's two and two. Breaking ball slider. Becker swings and misses. And the side is retired. So Seaver has retired the first nine to face him. We'll head to the top of the fourth. We're a third of the way through here at Wrigley. Mets one, Cubs nothing. You see the fired broadcast crew of John Sean being Chris Singleton. The center fielder, Carlo. That's half the heart of the order coming up here in the top of the fourth. Carlo Beltran. We'll lead things off. No friend is 0 for 1. First pitch swing, one hopper to short. Fielded by Bill Down. Throw is over to Cavaretta, and quickly, Beltran is retired for the first down. Now batting, the first baseman, Pete Alonso. That'll bring up Pete Alonso. Alonso struck out his first time up. Rookie first baseman. Big, burly slugger. That's all from Jenkins. Misses a touch up high. You can see the Cubs infield defense playing Alonzo to pull. Curveball swung on a miss. Big swing from Alonzo. Comes up empty. One and one to count. Better down and away. Alonzo swings over the top. So Jenkins ahead of him. One and two here. That's ball just off the outside corner. Evens the count at two apiece. Jenkins with the offering. Fastball and Alonzo hits this one pretty well to left center. It'll stay in the yard though. Seagull gets underneath it. Puts it away for the second out. The right fielder, number 18, so that'll bring up Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry 0 for 1. Struck out his first time up. Right 
pitch fastball on the outside corner. It's only one. The ball there misses down and away. One and one the count. is down and in. That one almost hit Strawberry on the back foot there. Being breaker from Jenkins. 2-1 offering. That's ball misses away. Howard Johnson waits on deck for New York. Jenkins winds and fires. 3-1 fastball on the inside corner and the count goes full. Faces the mound, perhaps pondering what he's going to try to bring at Strawberry here on the 3 2 offer. Darrell waggles the bat a bit. 3 2 pitch and a high fly ball. Deep to right field. Strawberry gets all of that one and that ball's out of here. Home run, Darrell Strawberry, his 10th of the season. Deep into the seats in right. And the Mets have taken a 2 0 lead over the Cubs here at Wrigley. Strawberry unloads. Deep, deep drive. Hartnett knew it right off the bat. Darrell does not get cheated here. That one well into the seats onto the concourse out there in right. So it's 2-0 New York. Here's Howard Johnson. Fastball is in for a call strike. Johnson struck out his first time up. And a ball slashed down. Jenkins winds and fires. Breaking ball, Johnson loops it down the left field line of foul. And Johnson wearing number 22 with Pete Alonzo now wearing number 20. And a slider ties Johnson up. He strikes him out for the second time. And the side is retired. But Strawberry goes deep. Home run number 10 on the year for Darrell. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Mets 2, Cubs nothing. Stepping in, here is Bill Dallin. Dallin is 0 for 1. Struck out his first time. Seaver has retired the first nine to face him. High fastball misses for ball one. Seaver again, your National League earned run average leader at the moment. Higher Mets rotation has been solid. Actually, with the exception of David Cohn, Cohn has struggled a bit. I haven't checked his stats over the last couple weeks, but his ERA was up near five at the end of April. Sid Fernandez is having a terrific year for the Mets. Importantly, left hander is Bob Murphy. Putting up fine numbers. In the Mets rotation. One two pitch here from Seaver. High slider. Dallin fouls it off to stay alive. Now for hold at one and two. Here's the pitch. Slider. Dallin doesn't fight. Count goes to two and two. Seaver wanted that one, but it was clearly a bit out there. Two two offer. Fastball down and fouls off another. Cubs finally working a count a little bit. Seaver at 39 pitches here in the fourth. Fastball that one misses inside. 
count is full for Bill Dallin. Stan Hack waits on deck. I'm still looking for their first base run. Seaver winds and fires. Another one foul off by Dallin. Eight pitches so far in this at bat. Seaver looking for something that will put Dallin away. 3-2 offering high fastball there. Dallin fouls off another one. That one might have been ball four. Dallin, of course, protected. And pitch of the at-bat. Seaver delivers. Chopper back to the mound. Seaver fields it himself. Throws to Alonzo, and there's one away. Seaver wins the war with Bill Dallin. Beautiful day here in the Windy City. Here's Stan Hack. Hack is over one. He flew out his first time up. Curve ball misses down and away. One offering. Fastball just off the outside corner. Seaver flares in a bit. Didn't seem to say anything. He was kind of staring down the home plate on. 2 and 0 oh, the count. One a sinker on the inside corner. It's two and one. Seaver gets the signal from Hundle. Two one off. Right? That one's fouled off. The facing of the Cubs dugout. Rare home third base side dugout. Two two pitch from Seaver. Baseball fouled off again. Singles who wants this one up. Seifer goes up high and Hack gets a piece. So the Cubs fighting off a lot of tough pitches from Seifer here in this fourth inning. 2 2 pitch again. Another one is foul. Good back to back at bats by Bill Dallin and Stan Hack to open up the fourth for the Cubs. Seifer misses down and away. And once again, Seaver dealing with a full count. Seaver rocks and fires. Slider misses down and in. Ball four. Fine at bat from Stan Hack. The Cubs have their first base runner of the game with a one out walk. And that'll bring up Ron Santo. Santo grounded out his first time up. Throw over. Hack dives back in. Seaver from the set. That ball is a call and strike. Fires pitch out, runner doesn't go. That's thought something might be on there, but Hack stays anchored to first. One and one the count. Receiver is in, the count goes to one and two. 22 pitches in the inning from Seaver. After a very economical first three innings. Comes to the set again. One two pitch. Fastball in there for a called strike three. Down goes Sano. Fastball up and away, but a clear strike. Based on the stat cast, take a look at the sequence here. Fastball low, pitch out. Sinker away, fastball up and away. So a big strike out there for Seaver for the second out. That'll bring up Gabby Hartnett. Hartnett is 0 for 1. Ball swung on and missed. Hartnett flew out his first time up. Oh, one pitch. 
Liner misses away. Gabby Hartnett, second in the National League and runs batted in right now with 35. Hits this one well in the center. Beltran back but hasn't measured. Shy of the track. Puts it away. And the side is retired. So the Cubs are still hitless, but they do get their first base runner on the Stan Hack walk. But make nothing of it. We'll head to the top of the fifth at Wrigley. Lindor and Mack and Hundley do up for the Mets. They lead it 2 0. Here's Francisco Lindor, struck out his first time up. The designated hitter. Number 12. That's ball there, misses down low. Sifter there is foul. Count goes to one and one. There misses low. It's two and one. And fouls it off. Two and two the count. Making ball and Norlay is off. Shane Mack waits on deck for New York. Three two offering coming here from Jenkins. Hopped up on the infield. That one's underneath it. He'll put it away for out number one. Out of town scoreboard. Okay, so the Orioles up on the Royals. 4 nothing. Manny Machado is over that game in the fifth. Yankees up 4 nothing on the Cardinals in the eighth. Aaron Judge has hit his ninth home run of the year for the Yankees. Rays and Red Sox later. 6-0 and oh, Pedro Martinez. Martinez and Wright, the pat pitching matchup there. Wins up on the White Sox, 3-0 in the fifth. Tigers up on the Indians, 3-2 in the eighth in Cleveland. Not sure which Ramirez that is. It is eighth home run of the season there. Angels and Blue Jays, Joe Lehner, Messer Smith, and Manoa in that matchup. Diamondbacks and Marlins yet to get underway in Florida. Taiwan Walker and Jose Fernandez, the pitching matchup there. Brewers and Reds will lock up at Crosley Field. Brandon Woodruff and Johnny Cueto the pitching match up there. Expos all over the Phillies, 6-0 in the fifth. Bryce Harper, 3-for-3 three three with three RBIs as he tries to get himself done. The Padres doing it to the Pirates again. Nip Winters shut them out yesterday, and now the Padres up 6-1 in the fifth. Johnny Grubb is holding for San Diego. Rockies and Dodgers. The battle in L.A. later on, Jeff Francis and Preacher Rowe. The pitching matchup there. Braves up on the Giants, 2-0 in the second. Dale Murphy is hit his ninth home run of the season for the Bravos. Two down, here's Todd Hundley. First pitch misses down low for ball one. Years in, takes a little extra time between pitches there. That's ball, and we fouled it off. Looking for rocks and fires, fastball misses down low. Two and one, the count. That's ball, fouled off again. Two and two as Jenkins works to Hundley. Back through the box, it hits off Jenkins. Beckert barehands it, throws the first, and he still gets it. Nice play there by Glenn Becker. We'll have to see if Ferguson Jenkins is all right. We've reached the midway point here at Wrigley. Mets two, Cubs nothing. Bill Cavaretto will lead it off for the Cubs in the bottom of the fifth against Tom Seaver. Seaver has yet to allow a hit. Cubs do have one base runner. Stan Hack through a walk in the fourth. Fastball on the outside corner for strike one. Fastball misses up and away. Ball 
one and one the count. Evil winds and fires. Sinker misses away. It's two and one. Abaretta pops this one up right behind the plate, right up the chute. Hundley doesn't even have to leave the catcher's dirt. Puts it away for out number one. Now batting, number 52. So a very frustrated little Cabaretta retreats. Here's Solly Hoffman. Hoffman is 0 for 1. He grounded out his first time up. Pitch curve ball misses down low. It's one and one. Sinker delivers. Sinker all down low. Sierra's has gotten the benefit of a couple of calls earlier on, but that one looked like a strike that he did not get. Two and one. The delivery here. Hoffman pops it up. Alfonso, shallow center, goes out, puts it away for out number two. The bat, number 22. So that will bring up Jimmy Siegel. Always 0 for 1. He grounded out his first time up. I get that necklace off of Jimmy Siegel. <laughs> Minor thing, but I just noticed it. It annoyed me. First pitch from Seaver, fastball in for a called strike at the knee. Seaver winds and fires. Fastball misses down low. One and one, the count. I am out in the center, and there's the first hit for the Cubs. So with two outs in the fifth, the Cubs have their first base knock. MCA lines a center, lines a single into center, I should say, for the Cubbies' first hit. So now here's Ian Happ. Happ is 0 for 1. Seaver fastball misses just off the corner. Happ flew out his first time up. As expected, a good pitcher's duel going here. Tom um, Seaver and Fergie Jenkins. First run, largely caused by the pass ball by Hartman that let Reyes advance to score on the loop single from Alfonso. Jenkins could be excused for that one. The second Mets run coming on a bomb of a homer from Darryl Strawberry. One and one, the count as Seaver works to half. Appreciate y'all joining me here on this Friday afternoon broadcast. And year three of the Franchise Stars Baseball League, the National League, game of the week from May 18th. And we're about two weeks out from the rookie draft. And we'll find what players will enter the FSBL for year four. Fastball there, Seaver gasses it up and blows half away to retire the side. So the Cubs get their first hit, but they don't have anything else to show for it. We'll head to the top of the sixth at Wrigley. 2 nothing Mets. Here's Jose Reyes. Reyes, one for two, single and score. Jose That's all Reyes fouled it off. With the 0 1 offering from Jenkins, curveball misses outside. One one offering, slider misses up and away. Two and one the count. Jenkins gets the sign from Martin and delivers. Reyes pulls that one foul, and the count goes to two and two. Her 
serve ball. Reyes takes, and the count goes full. Eduardo Alfonso waits on deck. 3-2 offering. Coming from Jenkins. Out of the zone, Reyes chases it, taps it back to the mound. Jenkins throws him out for the first out. The National League batting leader is there. Ernie Lombardi of the Reds leading the lead hit it. Here's Alfonso, one for two with the RBI single. Home run leaders in the National League, Chuck Klein of the Phillies leads with 15. Melot, Rogers Hornsby, each with 14. Willie Mays with 13, Matt Holliday of the Rockies with 12. Alfonso taps one back to Jenkins for the second out of the inning. The center fielder. Carlos. Klein also leads the National League in RBIs with 43 as Carlos Beltran steps in. Gabby Hartnett of these Cubs, second with 35. Ronald Acuna and Dale Murphy of the Braves, third and fourth. And Mel Ott is fifth with 32. One and zero the count. Jenkins works to Beltran. Beltran fly ball to the left. Half is retreating. He's going back on it. Beltran hit this one well. Takes half back to the track, but he reels it in to retire the side. That one had a little hop on it off the bat. There's the uniform glitch we know and love appearing for the first time in this game. Cubs sending Becker down and half here in the bottom of the sixth. It's still two nothing Mets. Here's Glenn Becker. Becker is old for one. Number 18. Slider just off the plate. It's 1 and up. Becker, minor cold streak. 6 for 16 in his last four. Slashes this one foul. Minor hot streak. I said cold streak there by mistake. Becker's been cold all season. Hopped up, shallow center. Long run, Beltran coming on. He'll get him. Puts it away for out number one. Now number 15. So the Cubs got their first base runner in the fourth on the hack walk. Their first hit in the fifth. Now they'll try to get their first run. Hoping for a natural progression. Here's Bill Dallin. He's 0 for 2. Ball from Seaver is in for a call strike. That's ball there, pulled foul, and Seaver's ahead of Dallin 0 and 2. Ugly gives Seaver the sign. That's ball. Fouled off by Dallin. Going to the count. Seaver rocks and fires. Fastball misses up high. Dallin takes it. And Fred Howard joined us. <laughs> I appreciate that, Fred. Thank you very much, man. Do you stream your stuff on your channel? Because I see you post stuff in that Facebook group all the time. But I never have seen you click anything like for a live stream or anything like that. Um, but if you put if you do games on your channel, I will certainly make sure to, to, to check it out. I know you do some cool projects, too. So I certainly appreciate you tuning in here. I hope all is well with you, sir. Count is full here as Seaver works to down. Rocks and fires. Dallin fights off another one. Dallin a great at bat his last time on, even though it ended with him grounding out. And a 10 pitch at bat. Now he's on the verge of doing it again here. Loops this one foul. Off the facing of the stands, down the left field line. Once again, the full count offering from Seaver. Curveball looks good. The ump disagrees. It's ball four. And Dowen draws the one-out walk. So now, here's Stan Hack. Hack is over one. He walked in the fourth for the first Cubs base runner of the game. Clark, the Cub, hopping around on the dugout. 
think they just had a midget in the stands. That woman looked like a third of the size of every other graphic. <laughs> First pitch to Hack Slider. Runner goes. Throw down a second. A good throw from Hundley, and he gets him. So the Cubs, knowing that runs would be at a premium, they send Bill Dallin here, but Hundley gets a good pitch to handle, throws a strike, and Reyes slaps on the tag, and the base runner is erased. And that slider misses up and away. Count is now 2-0. and up. The Seaver, who was incredibly economical through the first three innings, is now up at 88 pitches. Certainly more in the tank for Seaver, but the odds of a complete game... Now at least up in question. Popped up there, Reyes tracks it down, and the side is retired. So the Cubs get one more base runner, another walk. They still only have one hit, though. We'll head to the top of the seventh. Alonzo to face Jenkins for the Mets. Hey, Emmett, thank you very much. Hey, Sean, how are you, man? Oh, I appreciate that, pal. That's about as good a compliment as you can give me. Thank you very much. I, lo I love doing this. I really do. I love doing this. Cubs have some action in the bullpen. Phil Regan, the right-hander. Bob Chipman, the left-hander. Throwing out there for the Cubbies. Alonzo, the rookie. He's 0 for 2 here. Jenkins has been very good. Seaver's just been better. Fastball misses away. It's 2-0. Always greatly appreciate you guys giving me a bit of time. I would always bet to see you pop in a chat as well like the interactive part of this. Alonzo fouls that one off. Two one pitch, fastball, ooh, generous strike there given to Jenkins. And the count goes to two and two. Fastball, foul back by Alonzo, and the count holds at two and two. Let me ask you, sound just like an announcer, are you? Well, first of all, thank you. Um, I actually originally went to school for broadcasting, and I ended up in print journalism instead. Just the nature of the just the nature of the road that I that I ended up taking. Um, I played out real quick. I've discussed this on the channel previously. I went to college to play baseball um, at NC State, and I hurt my arm, and I was a bit immature, and I just needed kind of a reboot. I took a semester off. I transferred up to Buffalo, and when I transferred up there, Buffalo cut their broadcasting program on the jump from Division Three sports to Division One, and the broadcasting program was one of the things that got cut. So I've always liked writing anyway, so I ended up going into print journalism, and that's the road that I've taken since then. So starting this channel back during the pandemic kind of let me get back into broadcasting, which I always loved what I originally intended from, from my career to be. So it's kind of a, a hobby that is fulfilled in the, my, original, uh, my original career path as well. More info than you probably needed, but I appreciated the compliment, so I figured I'd give the, I'd give the explanation to it. So yes, I'm, I'm loosely trained in, uh, in, in broadcasting, but I love doing it and I love the game. Comes inside. Fastball misses inside. It's two and one. Alonzo on first after roping that single. Two and one. I think they had Alonzo going there. An odd hit and run combination to run with Strawberry, who can strike out at the plate, and Alonzo, who's not fast at first. Two and two the count. High fastball, and he gasses Strawberry there. Fastball gets him from Jenkins. Six strikeout for Ferg. And there's the first out here in the seventh. The third baseman, Howard Johnson. So that'll bring up Howard Johnson. Johnson has been struck out twice. Jenkins has chewed him up both times. First pitch fastball up and in. Ties him up a bit. He fouls it off. Jenkins delivers, fastball, just a touch high. One and one the count, the Wrigley faithful wanted that one. Popped up here, foul ground. Santo moving over, he's near the dugout, reaches over the railing. Nice play, Ron Santo, for the second out. 
So Johnson hoped that one would drift a little further left. No such luck. Two down. Here's Francisco Lindor. Lindor is 0 for 2. As he just continues to struggle. He has been one of the bigger disappointments in the league to this point here in year 3. Oh, thank you, I mean, I appreciate that. Lindor fouls that one off. Count goes to 0 and 2. Jenkins from the set. Delivers. Fastball misses down low. So Fergie up near 100 pitches. And Jenkins and Seaver certainly can go over the 100 pitch mark. But I think if somebody gets in the scoring position, you might see the Cubs call on the bullpen. 1-2 pitch. Lindor fouls it off again. Here comes pitch number 100 from Ferguson Jenkins. High fastball. Lindor takes. 2-2 two two the count. Lewis breaking ball chews Lindor up. We pop up to Santo. He puts it away. And the side is retired. Seventh inning stretch time here at Wrigley. There's no Harry Carey to sing it. But feel free to sing it for yourself if you're so inclined. Ron Santo, Gabby Hartnett, and Phil Cavaretta do up for the Cubs in the bottom of the seventh as they try to get something going against Tom Seaver. Here's the rookie Santo. He's 0 for 2. He has struck out and grounded out in this one. Again, the Cubs have only one hit. That didn't come until the fifth. Seaver at 89 pitches to open the bottom of the seventh. Fastball. Up and in. Call the ball. Underly sets the sign. 1-0 slider down in the dirt. It's 2-0. Mets have gotten some bullpen action going up. Pat Zachary, the right-hander. Pedro Feliciano, the lefty, throwing in the New York pen. 2-0 pitch to Sano. Breaking ball, and Sano puts it right back through the box. There's a base hit. So it's a leadoff single for Ron Santo as the Cubs try to get something going here in the seventh. And finally break through against Tom Seaver. Seaver's been terrific. Two hits over six. That was the second. Two walks, four strikeouts, 92 pitches. Most importantly, no runs allowed. As our good friend Todd B joins us. How are you, Todd? Good to see you, pal. So here's Gabby Hartnett. Hartnett is 0 for 2. First pitch swing. Puts one down the right field line. It's slicing. It'll end up in the seats out of play. Hartnett second in the National League in RBIs. And this is May 18th of year three of the franchise stars baseball league. 0-1 pitch. Fastball down low. Hartnett gets a piece and fouls it off. Seaver from the set. Takes a peek over at first. And delivers. Hartnett chases one out of the zone to protect. Gets a piece to stay alive. Seaver from the set again. Delivers. Fastball comes inside. He ties Hartnett up. Strikes him out. That's strikeout number five for Seaver and a big out here in the bottom of the seventh. Fastball rode in on Hartnett and tied him in knots. So now here's Phil Cavaretta. Cavaretta is 0 for 2. Breaking ball in for a call strike. Cavaretta has flown out and popped out. And Cavaretta's had a nice little season here so far. 281, seven homers. 0-1 pitch from Seaver. Fastball, Cavaretta skies it the other way. Shane Mack drifts over, puts it away for out number two. Now batting, number 52. 
So now the Cubs will send up Solly Hoffman. And actually, now that we're in the seventh, we'll see. It's a righty. Let me see who they have on the bench. So if, you, if you're not familiar with the channel, again, I know I have a couple of new people in here. So first of all, most importantly, thank you again for tuning in. So basically, I create the rosters. I do all the ratings myself. I've got my custom formulas and all that kind of stuff. But I really don't control much in terms of players. I don't control the hitting or the pitching. But I will, because the game's roster management can be a little questionable, I will jump in from the seventh inning and later and handle pitching changes um, and full, and uh, you know bullpen changes and pinch hitters where appropriate. Um, I can't override a move that the computer does on its own, but I can like initiate something. So like here, something like Solly Hoffman, who's not really a great a great bat. I want to see if the Cubs have a decent left-handed bat here, and they do. Um, in in Abner uh, in Abner Dalrymple, so you could use Dalrymple here um, for Hoffman. Now I got to see do they have anybody else who can play right field because if they don't, see the game. Right, that's the problem that we have. The game will lock up. So I'm going to have to actually have to let it do that. Because the game, when it's in computer management, if you don't have, and I really should go in and make all the outfielders be able to play at least all the corner positions because of this issue. So if I take Solly Hoffman out of this game and then put it back to computer control, if I pinch hit Abner Dalrymple for him, but Dalrymple can't, isn't listed as being able to play center field or right field, and right field is what they need. The game will lock up, um, and I'll lose, and I'll lose everything that's happened in this game. Um, so we're going to end up having to leave Hoffman in here, which in the seventh isn't as big a deal. Ideally, I would pinch it for him, but I'm not going to stress it too much. Um, but definitely, before I get to the postseason of this year, I think I'm going to make it because um, I've never wanted the game. Well, like Commissioner, exactly, <laughs> like Todd says. Um, you know, because what I didn't want to do was have the game kind of bastardize things. I didn't want to just, I only program guys to be able to play a position that they played at least 20% of the time in real life. Um, and that's to keep, you know, things from, you know, having a guy who maybe played third base, you know, 20 games in his career, but was a great first baseman and have the computer say, well, we're going to stick him at third. Um, to get his bat in the lineup when that's not something that would ever really be done. Um, so I didn't want it to kind of... It was basically a guard against screwing up the lineups. And now Hoffman comes through with the hit here. So a good non-call there. Um, but that's really the reason for that. But I do feel like not everybody should be able to play center field. But I do think everybody should be able to play one of the corners probably. And that will prevent that issue from coming up. So here's Jimmy Siegel, one for two. Siegel had the first hit of the game for the Cubs. Single back in the fifth. First and second, two outs. Certainly the best chance so far for the Cubs. You haven't done much. Fastball from Seaver rides away. It's one and one. And Siegel, a recent call-up after the Walt Morton injury. 1-1 one, one breaking ball, weakly hit the second. Alfonso charges, flips the first, and just is able to get him. And Seaver gets out of the inning. So the Cubs get two on, but cannot score. We'll head to the top of the eighth here at Wrigley. Mets two, Cubs nothing. Fergie Jenkins' day is done. We'll get to his pitching line in a moment. Bill Regan, the right-hander, will come on. His at the final line for Ferguson Jenkins. Seven innings, four hits, two runs. No walk, six strikeouts. Jenkins keeping up a fine season. And again, that first run was really, back in the first inning, Reyes singled, but then he advanced the second on a clear pass ball from Gabby Hartnett, who just plain missed it. And then a weekly hit loop single from Edgardo Alfonso brought Reyes home. That was kind of a soft run allowed by Jenkins. Second one, of course, a bomb from Darryl Strawberry for his 10th home run of the year. That's how we got here, the 2 nothing. So Regan works to Mack. Mack 0 for 2. Swings and misses at the slider there. It's 0-2, the count.
I appreciate that, Todd. Thanks. Yeah, just try, you know, again, I just, I, I was kind of overly resistant to that, and I got to that first postseason, and I was like, man, I really should get in here and make some of these decisions, because some of the things the game was doing just didn't make sense. Um, it's not terrible by any means. But it's just, and AI is so hard, and I really don't think that people really get how hard managing AI in these games from a programming perspective really is. It's really, really difficult. Good slider there from Regan gets Mac to go fishing. And there's one away. But if I feel like I can make things better and more realistic, then that's what I'm then that's what I'm gonna do. Exactly, Todd. Exactly. Exactly. So now here's Hundley. Hundley is 0 for 2. Sinker there. That looked like a good pitch from Regan. He got squeezed there. One and 0 the count. Sinker is in for a call strike. Phil Regan, of course, in real life, but ultimately end up being pitching coach very late in his career for the Mets. Sinker misses away. Out goes to 2-1. and one. Hundley goes the other way with this one. That's going to be extra bases. Hundley very much a full hitter. Puts that one to the opposite field. Half gets it in. But it's a one-out double for Todd Hundley. And the Mets have a runner in scoring position. Hundley's fifth double of the season. Jose. Good piece of hitting there from Todd Hundley. Of course, his father, Randy Hundley, was a noted Cub, but he is not on the Cubs roster as of yet. He is in their player pool, so he can join them at some point in a future rookie draft. So, with Hundley in scoring position, and Hundley does not run well, I think the Mets would probably bring in a pinch runner here for Todd Hundley and then let Joe Ferguson wrap this game up behind the plate. So Hundley will get run for 74. Mets don't have a ton of speed on the bench, but Juan Lagares and Lagares is not like not like um Carlos Beltran needs a defensive replacement. So Juan Lagares is going to come in and run for Todd Hundley. Your attention please. Now running in this situation as the Mets try to get one more run on the board. Um actually, you know what? Let me go back there for a minute. Zachary and Feliciano. Now that this game is so close, I kind of feel like the Mets should probably Number 16. have better relievers going. Oh, Zachary's, Zachary's been okay. Feliciano's been really good. All right, all right. We're actually we're actually gonna let that we're actually gonna let that be the bullpen stuff for now. So one out, man on second. Lagaris runs for Hundley. Here's Jose Reyes. Pick off a 10. Lagaris dives back in. <laughs> Rebel. <laughs> Sinker is in there for a call and strike. Reyes, one for three. A single and a run scored. Again, it's been a disappointing season for Reyes. Batting average just a tick over 200. Lines this one in a gap in left center field. That's going to help the average and the RBI total. It's an RBI double into the gap in left center. Reyes going for three. A bit greedy here. Throw to third and Reyes is thrown out on the relay throw. Reyes trying to draw a throw there. He didn't need to. The run was going to easily score. So a little bit. Ah, yes. Sorry, Brad. I missed that. I missed that first reference. I missed the 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 purpose of that reference. I thought that was just about my 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 subbing. But yes, Rebel Randy Hundley. Randy Hundley was a solid catcher. So Reyes throwing out, trying to stretch that one, but it is an RBI double, and the Mets now have a three nothing lead. Alfonso smacks this one down to Cabaretta, and that will retire the side. So the Mets get a run. And we'll see if Seaver stays in. Joe Ferguson comes in behind the plate to catch for Hunnell. Seaver is going to stay in for the moment. Here's Ian Happ. Happ is 0 for 2.
receiver rocks and fires. Fly ball to center. Beltran cracks back a bit, but has it measured. Puts it away for out number one. Now batting. Number 18. <laughs> yes, Brad. That was ill that was ill-advised. Reyes is super fast, but and it, it's just also just a, it's an unnecessary move there. I don't think the Cubs have another second baseman on their roster right now, actually. They have an absolute black hole at second base until they get um until they get Sandberg. Let me see, but I don't even think they have another second baseman on the roster. Woody no, Woody English can't play there. Yeah, so they don't really have an option there at second base. So Beckert Beckert is going to stay in. Seaver rocks and fires. Beckert is over for two. Fastball misses up and away. So again, for the benefit of the new people, as the closer, Jesse Orozco, gets up to throw along with Pedro Feliciano. You know, it is a pair of lefties. Um, for the benefit of those who just joined, my setup here, Franchise Stars Baseball, it's basically franchise roster, franchise stars with a twist. Every franchise has a 100-player master pool. 40 were chosen at random for year one. All the remaining players will come in eventually in rookie drafts as Becker grounds out there for the second out. Um, four players from the remaining 60 in the pool will join through each draft class, plus one random Negro Leaguer will join each franchise as this all goes forward. For example, Josh Gibson joined the league this season um, with, with the Blue Jays, and there are others, NIP winners for the Padres, etc. Um, so each team gets five new players each, each season. So there's lots of greats who aren't in the league as of yet. The Cubs didn't get a great initial draw, for example. So the Cubs don't have Ernie Banks yet. They don't have Hack Wilson. They don't have Ryan Sandberg. They just got Ron Santo. It's Bob Chipman will come in here to throw the ninth for the Cubs. Chipman's been terrific. 1.89 ERA through his first 13 appearances. So it's kind of a combination of franchise stars with a random debut element to it. Um, when the game does the rookie draft at the beginning of June, I let the computer run the draft, and it drafts fictional players. And basically, the top five guys... So if the computer drafts a fictional second baseman in the first round, then the computer will get a random second baseman from the remaining guys in that 100-player pool who are at second baseman. So if the Cubs draft a second baseman in the first or second round or whatever, when this draft happens this season, I'll go to their sheet, I'll spit out a random number among the remaining second baseman in the Cubs pool, and maybe they'll get Ryan Sandberg or somebody else, but they'll get a second baseman. So that's how the draft part of this and the new players coming in each year is handled. Beltran flies out there, one out here in the top of the ninth. Here's Pete Alonzo. Alonzo, as we mentioned, the rookie, the main rookie for the Mets. Ron Santo, the main rookie this season for the Cubs. Third ball from Chipman, misses outside. Sean Marshall and Don Elston both throwing in the Cubs' bullpen. Just in case Chipman gets into trouble here. Alonzo fouls off the fastball. The count goes to one and one. Chipman looks in and deals. Alonzo fouls another one. The count goes to one and two. Curious to see if Seaver starts the night. He hasn't allowed a run yet. If the game doesn't take Seaver out, you know, if the AI doesn't take Seaver out, as Chipman locks Alonzo up with a fastball at the knees for the second out. Um, if the game lets Chipman, uh, let, let Seaver start the bottom of the ninth, I'll let Seaver start the inning, and I'll let him pitch until a runner reaches scoring position. Um, again, if the game decides to take Seaver out, I couldn't override that and keep him in. Uh, but if the game if the game says that he can start the night, I will let him start the night. I won't force him out of the game. So here's Daryl Strawberry. Straw one for three. He hit his tenth home run of the year. A mammoth shot. 
back in the fourth off of Fergie Jenkins. And Jenkins was terrific in this one. Seaver just a bit better. Fastball down and in. This is its one and one. Shifting from the set. Breaking ball. Strawberry fouls it off. And the count goes to one and two. Pitch, curveball, misses down and in. I am most often on either in this slot or late at night. I will occasionally pre-record something and then post it like in prime time, quote unquote. Um, but if I'm doing something live like this, it's usually right around this time slot or late at night. I work evenings at a newspaper, so I don't get to do the live thing until after I get home from work. Two and two the count, breaking ball from Chipman. Strawberry gets a piece to stay alive. It's there, fly ball, hit well to right center. Ranging over, Jimmy Siegel gets there, puts it away. And the side is retired, so the Cubs will get one more crack at it. The Mets lead it 3-0. Hack, Santo, and Hartnett do up for Chicago. We'll see if Seaver gets the ninth, and he will. So at 109 pitches, Tom Seaver will start the bottom of the ninth. Look for the complete game. Here's Stan Hack. Hack is 0-2. He's also drawn a walk. It's first pitch fastball in for a called strike. Adjusting the sliders and the ratings and all that stuff when I created all these players to be able to get the game to let pitchers go to 110, 115, 120 pitches was a big thing for me because of this being a historic kind of set. Like, I don't want Tom Seaver getting pulled after six innings. Um, you know, so that was a big, a big focus of mine. And Seaver saw his hack off for the pop-up there in the first out. Slugfest going on in Pittsburgh as Ron Santo checks in here. 7-6, Andre is over the Pirates. Santo, first pitch swing, drives this one out to right center. That's going back. Strawberry giving chase. It's a one-hopper off the wall. Santo pulls in the second with a one-out double. Tenth double of the year for Santo. And here comes Gabby Hartnett stepping in. I know I said... I think, I, I, I think I'm going to stick with it since I said it before. And that this was, and you know, Cavaretta being the lefty, I'm gonna let Seaver pitch to Hartnett, and then if anything happens there, then I'll bring Orozco in to bring in a lefty pitcher to face Gabby Hartnett. Here doesn't necessarily seem to be the best move. So we're gonna give we're gonna give Seaver one more here, and if Hartnett gets on, then then that'll be it. And Hartnett ropes a base hit to left. Mack comes up with it, holds Santo to third, and that's going to be the end of it for Tom Seaver. So they ride their ace as deep as they can. Hartnett jumps all over the first pitch here and strokes a single in the left. See, the game actually would have left Seaver in there because he hasn't allowed a run yet. But I don't think I don't think I don't think that's how we handle this. Cavaret has been good. And he's a lefty, so you have a closer. That's why you bring him in. Jesse Orozco, and Orozco has not been great this year. He does have 16 saves. So he's going to get the call. So Seaver's day is done. Eight and a third, the two runners on base are attributable to him. But Seaver, another fantastic outing in what has been a terrific opening two months of his season. Your attention, please. Now it's going to be up to Orozco. Orozco's princess. And now Orozco will deal with Phil Cavaretta. This is going to be Orozco's game at this point. Cavaretta is 0 for 3. First pitch slider misses inside. sack. 
And the Cubs won the first game of this three-game set. This is the middle game. Fastball is in for a called strike. It's one and one. Feliciano continues to throw out there in the bullpen. Again, at this point, this is going to be a Roscoe's game to settle. 1-1 one, one pitch. Slider, good pitch there from Orozco. The count goes to one and two. Runners at the corners. Cabaretta is the tying run at the plate here in the bottom of the ninth. Slider gets him on the outside corner. Cabaretta doesn't like the call. Lots of movement on that pitch. May have barely clipped it. I thought it was outside. Oh, there's our little stat cast. Flips the black. That's a great pitch from Orozco. So now here's Solly Hoffman. One for three. First pitch fastball. Hoffman fly ball on the left. Shane Mack is underneath it. Puts it away and the ball game is over. The Mets shut out the Cubs 3-0. Here to take the middle game of this three-game set. So the Mets, who have played very well lately have taken over the lead in the NL East. Tom Seaver improves to 6-1. and one. Fergie Jenkins deserved a better fate in this one. He falls to 5-4. and four. His RBI single in the first. Here's the Darryl Strawberry Blast in the fourth. Taking Jenkins way deep. Jimmy Siegel with the first hit that the Cubs got in the fifth. There's Fergie again. Fergie was very, very good in this game. But Tom Seaver continues his brilliance. Final line score, three runs, six hits, no errors for the Mets. No runs, five hits, no errors for the Cubbies. Seaver, player of the game honors, goes eight and a third, gives up five hits, strikes out five, walks two, allows no runs. Jenkins, seven innings, four hits, six strikeouts, no walks, a pair of runs allowed. <laughs> Appreciate that, Brad. Thanks for checking in, pal. Next game on the channel. Not sure. I might actually have time to do one later today. i got some stuff to take care of, but if I have time, I'll do it then. If not, you know, either late tonight or late tomorrow night. Um, we'll do the American League game of the week from May 18th. The Houston Astros will visit the Texas Rangers. It'll be our first look at the Rangers this year. I know Mike Scott is throwing that game for the Astros. I don't remember who's throwing it for the Rangers. Also, if you are interested, Franchise Stars Football League action, exact same premise and structure as this league, um, but with Madden 24, posted a game last night, the Patriots and the Cowboys, in Week 4 action of the FSFL. Hugely appreciate you guys spending a little bit of time with me today. Brad Howard, Todd B. in the house. Emmett was here as well, as was Sean 1113 Network. I got Network. Got the TV stream. Um... We'll check out Sean's stuff as well. But hugely appreciate it, guys. Be good to each other. We'll talk soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. The Mets take down the Cubs at Wrigley. 3-0.